talk about space and the arts, uh, which will be on the 18th of April. And then we'll be doing an event on the 24th of April, revisiting our interest in synthetic biology. So uh, keep an eye on our website. And if you aren't a member of our mailing list, please join up. You can either join up via our, uh, our website or by filling in one of the cards at the back. So thank you for coming this evening. Um, we've got talks by two really fantastic artists who I've known for a very long time and I've had a, the great privilege of, of working with uh, over the years. And um, I will introduce Kira Riley in a minute, who's our first speaker. A few, a few house details. Uh, in case of fire alarms going off, uh, stay calm, follow me. Um, if you can't follow me for some reason or other, follow Joe. This is Joe. Please no smoking anywhere in the building. Please no smoking in the lavatory. If you are caught smoking, I will personally hold you onto the pavement because we're likely to lose our license as well as our, um, as well as our tenancy. So uh, I would really appreciate it. We will have a pause between the two speakers so you can go out and get your nicotine fix, if that's okay. Thank you very much. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to introduce Kira O'Reilly now. Kira is an artist that I've known uh, for quite a few years. Uh, Kira has, initially I knew Kira as a, as a live artist, as a performance artist, but I've also become aware of her, uh, her projects in working with biotechnology. And uh, we worked with Kira in 2009 on a project called Interspecies, where we commissioned a, a project that she did called Falling Asleep with a Pig. And uh, so I'm going to hand over to Kira now. Thank you very much. I've just realised that my presentation, uh, I've yet to open it, so bear with me whilst I just faff around a bit with some folders and open this. Okay, okay um, it's always hard to know where to begin with the story, and I feel like this is a bit what I'm going to do tonight, is, is tell you a story that I've told quite a number of times, um, but trying to figure out where to begin is, is sort of interesting. And, and, and some of this work is um, quite old now, but I think what's, so, so my versions of events might be a little suspect um, and different from other versions that I've told before. Um, what is nice about this uh, is, it's, is it's, it's focusing on work that um, was developed at Symbiotica, um, in Perth, where Oron runs um, this phenomenal situation where artists and other people can go and work in laboratories and um, get their hands wet in the, in the biosciences, but also um, an, another piece which I, I made for, um, which was commissioned by the Arts Catalyst. So it's nice to have these two things sort of weaving. Um, so this presentation tonight is called Pig Tales. Um, I'm going to try and talk to you and hold a microphone and uh, make the slides happen all at the same time, which I've never done before. I'm not, I'm not the greatest at multitasking. Um, so when I was trying to think about where to begin, I was thinking about um, flesh and skin and resemblances and things appearing the same but being different and things that, that are very different but sometimes seem the same and I was thinking about um, me and pigs and my body and pigs and flesh and fat and porkiness and pudginess and feeling piggy and feeling uh, feminine and feeling sexy and feeling um, shame and feeling all these different kinds of bodies and different dislocations of bodies and different kinds of bodies and for me um, you know, making I've I've made a lot of artworks with my body. Um, when I when I first studied uh, fine art, um, I was much more interested in the actual sort of process of shoving material around and making it do things and trying to manipulate it and its malleability and the fact that material could sort of undergo a sort of metamorphosis. You know, be it plaster or latex or clay or paint or printmaking or any of those things that sense of sort of um, action of, of eventfulness of working with time or 
um, all these very powerful things. I spent some today in a, in a glassmaker's studio, and I was watching two people there, um, just because they happened to be doing it, wasn't anything special, make very long, um, uh, very, very long pieces of glass. Um, and so they were just pulling glass between them. So there was that amazing moment where it's liquid and it's molten, and then, you know, within seconds, it's become something that's still and stymied and static. So, and then I was telling the guy who showed me this stuff that it reminded me of watching technicians in the laboratory pull threads of collagen out of a rat's tail. And something about these kind of um, materials that are, that are somehow magical um, and so have this potential for metamorphosis. So I'm sort of starting there because this, this seems to be the sort of bigger picture of, of what I'd like to talk to about, about tonight. So, so my beginnings as an artist were making performances and I've thrown this slide up um, this is the day after a performance, and as you can see, it's a bunch of um, cuts, a bunch of scars to be specific. Um, it's skin, it's skin that's in a very raw process. All what was happening when this photograph was taken was, you know, there was a whole load of healing going on, there was a whole load of crazy activity in the skin going on as cells and inflammation was happening and the immune system was, had kicked in, you know, and there was a whole bunch of stuff that was happening of, you know, alert, a border has been opened, a boundary has been crossed, it's been closed down, and it's the day after. Where I'm rubbing my thighs because that's where it all happens. <laughs> the scars are still there doing strange things. Um, so the, se the sense of something in process, of a body in process. So these are the, some of the ideas that um, when I first met um, Oron Katz, quite, quite a long, long time ago now, long time ago now, um, he was sort of suggesting that some of these ideas, I don't think he quite said it like that, he was quite rude about how he talked about my work, actually, I seem to remember. Um, but that was all right. He was rude in a very nice way. We, we, we quickly became friends. But, but no, he was, he was suggesting... Um, it's terrible, I can't believe I said that. It's giving a really bad impression. He, he was... So, you know, being wonderfully provocative, and as is his wont, and, um, you know, in a way, suggesting that there was there was a way that, that that these things I was doing could be could be dislocated and rethought about in in a biosciences context. Um, and when I've been a foundation student, I've been um, I was working with latex a lot, and I thought the idea of growing skin would be just wonderful, uh, but something I never did at the time. Um, but I did after meeting Oran, I did think about. Um, it would be very interesting to return to that idea, and I'd made a whole bunch of blood prints and things with lace that looked a bit like cell cultures, looked a little bit sort of, you know, like um, something biological. Um, so I, I approached Symbiotica and got some funding from the Wellcome Trust to um, try and make a living piece of lace, which seemed quite straightforward at the time. Uh, little did I know that it was a, a completely hugely sophisticated idea and um, uh, more to the point, I wanted to make a piece of lace from my body. Um, so the piece became, um, I've been looking at this painting of, and the, the sort of story of uh, Marsyas who was flayed and become, became one whole wound. So this idea of, you know, the wound was already, this idea of the wound was already in my work, but this idea of something being taken off, the flame, and this kind of trope from Renaissance art sort of becoming, having a currency within for me, contemporary ideas around some sort of biotechnology um, seemed really interesting, seemed really kind of vital, and also it's sort of, you know, brought straight into those ideas of metamorphosis and things shifting. And also things between, you know, shifting shapes, shifting forms, shifting, and of course the human animal, non human animal sort of borders being suspect and open for question. Um, so I'm just going to flick on a little bit more. So that's kind of what it was called, Marsyas running out of skin. Um, so the proposal was to try and make a piece of living lace out of my skin cells, basically. Um, so I spent quite a lot of time learning how to grow cells and um, not making lace from my skin. Um, I, followed, I followed the sort of... Um, very, I guess, very traditional sort of approach, which is to, to use an animal model to make, to try and grow and try and work and try and learn sort of basic tissue culture from um, other kinds of cells. So originally they were cell lines, but then very quickly started doing um, growing cells from from a creature that had just been alive, and in this case a pig. Um, 
So the whole idea that the, there were pigs available in in the um, large research large uh, research facility, animal research facility, because they were being used by um, by other researchers, science researchers for, for asthma research. So I would come along um, generally after they'd killed the pig and take a little bit of skin and then try and grow cells from it, which, um, and the cells grew. I like to show this picture and, you know, a lot of, um, I should say a lot of, a lot of how I talk about what I do is, is, is really informed by um, certainly Oren and Yonat and their kind of discourse and artists like Adam Zaretsky and, you know, artists who've really wanted to sort of show the kind of messiness um, and how visceral and bloody, not, not, not to be sort of sensational about it, but to really kind of, um, well, certainly it's been really important for me to, to allow that, those kind of, um, not even aesthetics, but sensibilities and awarenesses, acutenesses of awarenesses to be, to be really present in the work. And I think what I found as I kind of engaged with these very beautiful processes of biotechnology was that that, in a way, is sort of becoming the work. That that's where, you know, I always find when I'm in any research process, part of the question is, where does the work really lie? I think I want to make a piece of living lace from my, from my skin cells, but then there's circumstances happen, but also what happens is a kind of emotional or intuitive or a conceptual shift that's almost despite myself. So um, my failure to, to work from my body, um, despite getting ethics approval and all those kind of unlikely things, um, you know, it felt dreadful at the time, felt absolutely awful at the time, but, but, but what was sort of fantastic was this other sort of beat of a, of a piece of work started happening, which was um, to think much more carefully and closely about what it was to work from another body and what it was to work from another kind of body. What does that mean? And what does that mean not just in terms of um, the science of that, but what does that mean maybe in terms of the um, kinds of imaginary bodies? So I, I suppose it was also the beginning of when I began to realize that, um, you know, bodies certainly from my perspective, exists simultaneously in, in many places. They're, they're real and material, but they're social, they're cultural, they're all they're political, they're sexual, they're all these things, but they're also somehow imaginary, imaginary speculative, and poetic, and sit in all these different places. They're multiple, and sit in all these intangible places at the same time. And so, so this is the beginning of trying to maybe Think about those ideas, but in a science context where science doesn't necessarily find a way to speak about those ideas. So this is just the sort of me trying to do with biopsies and tissue culture. I can kind of smile about it now because now I've learned how to do tissue culture a lot better and I can go, that's a big piece of meat and you really want something really tiny. This little technician part of me can sort of kick in. But, um, but what's wonderful about these really naive attempts is just how basic my idea was of how you grow cells, but also it worked. So there's this great thing between, you know, a sort of sophistication of an idea and, and actually the sim simplicity and that you can do it really crudely and it works, if you're lucky, but you can also refine and make something a craft, a skilled, precise, fantastic craft. Um, so the other thing I should mention is just, uh, you know, the kind of banal thing that, that many, many, you know, that all scientists working in biology, working with any kind of cell culture, um, probably don't have to think about, but certainly was massive for me, which is working from something that's just died and then seeing its cells perpetuate for a long time afterwards. You know, so that, I, I think that's a really important, obvious, but nevertheless a radical thing to say. So I'm going to move on quite a bit because I know there's going to be there's another piece that I want to sort of talk to after this piece. Um, so after, after working from these, these piggy bodies, um, the residency had ended and I'd come back to the UK and, and was left with my whole kind of um, sense of, you know, what, what, what was that? What the hell was that? What have I just done? And what's all that tissue culture about? And, and these pigs and, and this kind of feeling of... Um, Sort of emotional material. So I made a piece um, 
called In the Wrong Placeness. And this, this painted by Caravaggio is there of Doubting Thomas because I wanted to introduce the idea of touch, of touch somehow um, rupturing sight, the visual, this kind of realm that, you know, we see things and we believe them, but sometimes we see things and we don't believe them, but if we touch them, that maybe we have a different, a different orientation or relationship to them. Um, and I made a piece of work called uh, In the Wrong Placeness. Um, this is actually not really the work, it's a still of that I did for camera after the piece, but the piece was for one person at a time, and it was made in a, a, a domestic gallery space called Home here in London, but that unfortunately doesn't exist anymore. Um, and it was a piece that whereby you know you would come in, and I'd be there with a dead pig's body, uh, an abattoir body, so a body without any any sort of viscera, um, huge cavities, but with eyes and eyelashes. Um, and I would try and move this body around. It weighed, I don't know, about 48 kilograms or something. It's heavy. He I can pick it up, but, but and then I drop it. So it's got that sense of, of weight. Um, so I was trying to move this body around and, in a sense, reanimate it. So this is probably my favorite photograph from this piece because there's, it, you know, it says, well, for me, it says all that stuff about bodies being uh, almost like being confused about which body is which and what's emerging out of what and um, sort of girly bodies, piggy girly bodies, female bodies. And so, so it kind of toys with, with these different ideas we have about, about pigs and animals and sort of hints of maybe um, one body turning into another. Um, and I was trying to do things like blow through the pig to sort of animate her breath, but it wasn't meant to be a kind of overtly sentimental piece. It was just literally me figuring out stuff with one person at a time in the room and for them to touch. And people would touch, they wore latex gloves, and they would talk about, oh, she feels cold and you feel warm. So very, very simple, straightforward things, or people would get really into kind of opening her up and looking inside her, doing a kind of... Uh, anatomy investigation, or almost like a sort of gynecology sort of investigation. Sometimes it got so crude and rude and difficult, and other times it got um, moving and tender, and, and other times it was indifferent, and you know, it was a thousand different things, but uh, always uh, fascinating. Um, and this piece happened in, in several different places. Um, each time a different kind of sight with a different story um, that that sight gives it. So this is a gallery in uh, Luxembourg and this was uh, shown within a, a show called Skin to Faces um, which was very much um, science, art, technology shows. So that gave, that gave the piece, I think, a very different reading. Um, I've been really fortunate that each, each time there's been a superb photographer around to, to capture some kind of um, approximation of the piece. It's, it's different because actually the piece happens in private, so that can't be photographed. But, but there's a, a possibility to show these shapes and possibilities. Um, and there's another one which is, I think, speaks all by itself in a way. Um, so I, I, you know, I quite often, it's, it's ridiculous to talk about my work because I quite often start to talk by saying I make work about things that I can't put into words and then proceed to talk about it. But, but all these words are about not being able to capture something anyway. You kind of have to be there, I guess. Um, so this is something very obvious, I suppose, but I wanted to put it down. I read it yesterday and uh, thought that's kind of, it's very nice when someone else does put into words something that I'm trying to say. Um, so I was drinking coffee in, in Brick Lane and reading a bit of Deleuze and Guattari, having done a very energetic class at lunchtime, so I was feeling very hot and sweaty and like my body was dissolving and trying to absorb a whole bunch of theory and philosophy. And it sort of, it kind of worked. Um, but I loved this idea, the relationships between animals are the object, not only of science, but of dreams, symbolism, art and poetry, practice and practical use. So. Um, it's sort of setting up this idea of dreams and symbolism um, and different filters, I suppose, in a way. I was just um, part of, you know, doing this talk tonight is, is, is reflecting back on, on older work and seeing how an idea can move through a number of different filters, perhaps. 
Um, but I would like to talk about dreams a little bit and sleeping. Um, and I'm just putting up just boys and I like America and America likes me because I guess this was a very important piece that somehow along the way has informed some of my thinking about um, what it is to make art, what it is to make performance art, what it is to make performance art with a non-human animal that's not dead. Um, there was a piece that I, I had wanted to make when I was at Symbiotica, which was to go and live with the pigs in the large animal research um, facility. Uh, it scared me. I mean, luckily, you know, Oran immediately said, no, that, that won't be able to happen because this is an institution, and even though it's a really great idea, there's a many, many reasons why it won't be able to happen. And the great thing was always to have the discussion about something. So an idea could always live, because you could always talk about it. But it didn't come to, it, it, it certainly couldn't be manifest at that point in time. But the, the idea was very simply wanting to put two bodies alongside each other, a pig body and my body, asleep. And I was thinking about that in the sort of simplest terms of, of um, two bodies dreaming together in the state of sleep. Sleep being almost like a sort of common denominator, but I mean that in the sort of most lavish sense rather than in a sort of meager sense, but, but, but something about the mystery of sleep, the fairy tale quality of sleep, again, the kind of um, sleep as a, as a sort of space of change, of um, instability, of dreams, of things where transitions, unexpected transitions and transformations happen in, in dream content and consciousness. Um, so that was something, that was the kind of place it was coming from. Um, and wonderfully for me, um, the arts catalyst, you know, read my proposal for this piece. There were lots of things that weren't practic practical about how I wanted to approach it. Uh, there are a number of ethical issues and, um, but what, what there was was a sort of willingness to, to talk about it and to find ways of, of, of realizing the piece. And the simplest way that I think Nicholas suggested was that, that if myself and a pig spent long enough together in an environment, we would at some point both be asleep together, um, which I thought was a, a very elegant um, and simple but somehow had a, a beautiful sort of elegance to it as, as an approach to this work. So it's called Falling Asleep with a Pig. Um, and there were also, there were also issues about, you know, what, what pig, what kind of pig, um, how'd you get a pig, and how'd you get a pig to, to fall asleep with you, and what does that about mean anyway? So, so this piece has been made twice. The first time it was made um, was for, was within Corner House Gallery, which is, which is the gallery that this photograph is taken in. And the second time is the, is the A Foundation, which is a space here in London, and they've got a, or had a huge um, kind of courtyard and outside area. I'll show some pictures of that as well. Um, so there were two, two ways to approach this piece, or two environments to approach this piece. Um, and the pig that, that ended up being worked with uh, is called Delia. And there was, a, there was a very crucial moment for me where a pig became Delia, where, it, where pig, generic pig, shifted to pig specific being, specific person, specific personality, specific uh, stuff that maybe is her, is maybe, and maybe some of it's me, just what I project onto her, I don't know, but certainly um, a specific organism and uh, being and certainly character. Um, so Delia and I lived in this structure, this really interesting structure that, that I really liked a lot. I, I loved this version of the gallery because it was so kind of fake and it so played off um, gallery constructions and gallery sort of gallery pretending to be neutral and gallery pretending sort of um, that this build is sort of galleries pretending that they're not theatrical places that that they're not places that have sort of histories and trace. Um, so I really enjoyed I really enjoyed the structure and, and, and the kind of viewing mechanism that it set up um, for me and Delia to, to live in. And it was warm and she liked it and she didn't want to leave it. Okay. Um, what was really lovely about um, 
I think about those pieces, a lot of the time there are people there, but when there weren't people there, it was, was also when the piece was really interesting. I'm just going to flick through some of these slides just to give you an idea. We slept a lot at the opening, which was great. I've never slept at an opening before. I have no idea why I slept at the opening as well. It's not what I normally do. But somehow, utterly miraculously, both she and I dozed, and it could have been that it was very warm. Um, this is it at the A Foundation, so you can see it's sort of a similar structure, but this time there's a ramp. Um, and the ramp was really great. It was to try and kind of, um, to give Delia a possibility of entering the human sleeping area, even though I was generally asleep on the floor with her. Um, it, was, it was to kind of break down any suggestion of hierarchy, because there wasn't really meant to be, I mean, there is hierarchy, but there was, there, it was sort of trying to play with that, to, so there was a possibility of the levels that she could step into and that I could um, step down from or up to as well. Um, it was St. John's have a canteen. They have a small restaurant that was right next to the installation. And as many of you know, they're famous for head-to-toe, head-to-tail eating. So the chef would come by and look at Delia and look at me and smile. Um, which I found unerring and uh, nerve-wracking. Um, so a lot of her, a lot of the time, she was asleep underneath all the all the straw. Or was it hay? I can't quite see. So that's kind of what Delia did a lot of the time. Um, I didn't bur bury underneath that stuff. And also because the piece became a lot about conversations. It was outdoors, there were a lot of people, so it became about people talking to me, which I hadn't anticipated, and it became about people talking about what we were doing there, which was very different from when it was in the gallery. When it was in the gallery, it was a lot more about people watching and looking and seeing, and um, being sort of quiet, kind of being more regulated by gallery behavior, and you know, you look at the work, and maybe you talk quietly, whereas here it was a lot more sort of, what are you doing, you know, which, which was, which was really interesting shift. It was also really exhausting, but really um, fantastic to sort of have, a, have a, an approach to this work that had a different sort of mechanism um, in terms of how people could engage with it. And I just want to um, perhaps finish with um, this is another. This is a version of in the wrong placeness that was made in uh, Mexico. Um, Again, within the context of uh, performance, science, art, technology. Um, so there I am performing. And this is the one time where uh, an audience member has been photographed with the piece. This is in a very beautiful chapel. Uh, but the reason I wanted to show it's not just because they're quite nice pictures, um, but also because the, one of the other artists working in this, in this uh, small festival was Adam Zaretsky, who was doing a DIY DNA extraction <laughs> workshop. So he asked if, people always ask me what happens to the pig's body after the piece, and he asked if he could use the pig's body um, as part of the DNA extraction workshop. So what he has is all the workshop participants bring with them stuff that they think there's DNA in. Um, and he, for this, for this occasion, created a kind of altar. So the pig became very much part of the altar which I thought was fantastic. I love that, that her body has these cactus leaves on it and that there are fruit around and that it became a kind of fantastic sort of celebratory. What was even more fantastic was next door there were people doing a, a big hog roast, some kind of, just incidentally, nothing to do with the gallery or anything like that. Um, so here are some pictures of them doing the DNA extraction. So they've got this mashup of DNA from many, many different organisms and different plants and different other things. So it sort of all kind of becomes um, a meld, a DNA meld. So in there where it's a bits of pig. Um, and very, very finally, I'm just going to flip through these two images, which is a sort of return to another kind of pig body, a sort of more, um, this is with a Canadian artist, Jennifer Willett. Um, but it's another sort of dislocation where we've tried to create some images that reference work that we've both done in laboratories, but maybe allowing ourselves to enter more the kind of theatrical and the fantastical and, um, I don't know, mythological, maybe. 
So thank you very much. question. I think the, the second time was 72 hours. I think the first time was, was, it, 40, was it 48 hours? I can't remember. Was it two days? It was two or three days. It was two, the first it was two days in the garden. Yeah. Three, three I think it was, yeah. I think that's exactly what it was. But you yeah. want to go home, I think I think in the, in the gallery we were both very dreamy and uh, sleepy a lot of the time. It's really warm, but outside it was quite. I found it quite hard to sleep, and Delia buried herself, and yeah, and she didn't really come out, and so it meant that when there were people there, um, she was very private, and I was very public. Whereas in the gallery, she'd been kind of really happy to be looked at and really out there, and you, yeah, 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 yeah. So so that was so definitely there were really different behaviours depending on the environment, which I think was too cold, actually. Did she come up to you? So, yeah, but she was, oh no, she didn't come up around, no, no. It was, it was like, it was good that it was there as a possibility, but I wonder if it was a little bit steep for her, mm. even, even so, she needed something a bit more slow. Yeah, yeah, no, the bearing was definitely, it was October and that's where she was, she was at. Um, but she didn't want to leave it, she didn't want to leave either space, she really hated leaving. So again, I don't know if that's because it was comfortable or just she was scared and frightened. And you? You have so. to move to the moment? Or did you get into I the liked, I very much liked the gallery one. Mm. Um, I got very chilly in the other one. <laughs> but, um, and I didn't like being, it, it was really interesting to be on such public display. Because right. in the gallery it felt a bit more, it's just very exhausting. Yeah. But somehow the gallery one felt a bit easier. But it's it's very it's very interesting how exhausting I found it to be looked at for so long. Exposed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And especially exposed with uh, where people want you to talk as well. That 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 I found really really exhausting. But also you know really where where the piece was going. So you have to go with that because mm -hmm. where the piece is going, and that's also what's exciting about it as well. Um, Open book. Yeah, and just that a lot of the time, you know, I'd say, yes, I'm sorry, my, my <laughs> she's under there, yeah, yeah. that moving patch is, is, is Delia. My friend's asleep. Yeah, she's asleep. <laughs> yeah, or hiding and doesn't want to be seen by you. Which, and there were lots and lots of kids coming to the piece, which was so it's disappointing for the children. Um, but also, again, really great that you have that strange, weird collapse between an artwork and, and then something that could almost be in a... Uh, you know, at a city farm or something. It, I, I think those kind of odd, where it's a bit unfixed, is really great. You know, what, what, what is it? What is it doing? This piece. I was curious about the bonding that happened between you and Delia, and at the end of it, where Delia went, like, was that a bit wrenching for you, or was there a temptation to? Some sort of yeah, I had all sorts of intentions to go and visit her. I still have. I, you know, I thought of her this winter. I thought of where she. I've been to see her where she. I had before the piece been to where she lives, and so you know, I have a kind of visual of it, and it's and it's beautiful, but it's cold, and um, yeah. But I haven't. I still haven't been there. But I, I, you know, but I'm suspicious of my attachment as well, and. Uh, how much is just a sort of, you know, just like with a pet or something. I'm just, I, mean, I mean, I think this is what this, this work can potentially ask those questions of what these different relationships are to, you know, the pig in the laboratory or the pig in the butchers or the pig that's pet or the pig that's incidental, these different kind of um, hierarchies and different, and different relationships. So that, that and I think that's what's been really crucial with this work is trying to not be too, trying to be quite clear about that and the sort of little hypocrisies within as those relationships will change and as they're maneuvered, you know. Um, I think that's it. Hypocrisies or um, ambivalences or ambiguities, 
those kinds of you know very murky areas I think uh, have to be sort of vibrant and somehow um, made brought to the foreground. Mm -hmm. You know. You didn't feed her. Yeah, I, I did feed her. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. kind of forward. particularly in the in the in the gallery. But it was nice to kind of have to feel like because there was an animal wrangler there, and I felt like they they had to be there. But I very much wanted them to be away. Yeah, away, so I could just get on with doing those things for her. Yeah. Was there also like, oh, I was also thinking about what her testimony was and whether it made any difference to you, whether she was a cat or whether she was going to end up. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. You what yeah, well, I knew she, she lives on a farmer's pet. As, a, as kind of a, you know, a farm that people can go and visit and, and see animals, so, so her status would be, would be farm animal, but closer to, to pet than, than anything. There's no way she was going to end up as, as bacon, yeah. you know. So, so it, does, it does change. And also because she, she, she's not the kind of porky pink pig that, that you know, is in the first piece that I associate with bacon. And, and so I think all those kind of ideas that are superficial, but that they have a kind of um, a hook, you know, that allows me to think through some, maybe, and hopefully some other people, I don't know. Yes? So when working with Delia or any other live non-human mm -hmm. specimens, do you consider them a collaborator? As collaborators, no. 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 It, it, it's, just, it's just too apparent. There isn't... Um, Certainly in my approach, um, I think there might be with some other artists, mm -hmm. but with my approach, there isn't really um, an approach of collaboration. Um, I don't think I'm trying to make that happen. It, and that's not to say it couldn't, and, um, but I, I, think, I think that would, that would involve much, much longer time. Um, but it's a nice, it's a, it's a nice as a sort of model to think about collaboration, I think, certainly. Um, but I think more about intervention, perhaps, like when I've worked with spiders, you know, and I'm messing around with their habitats and stuff, I'm making interventions, I'm making huge interventions into their environments and what they're doing. Um, or they are into mine, but it's more me into them, I think. Um, before, when, when you're talking about um, the animals that you were talking about, attempting to grow the lace mm. in the laboratory, and you said that, kind of that it worked a little bit. I'm just curious a little bit more how successful you were in, in mm -hmm. your own terms and just if you could talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. that process. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, in, in, in retrospect, and as I've done more, more since, there's a lot more that I could have done. Um, well, I don't 